The words too big to fail have been thrown around a lot lately. Still, the next time a bank fails, it could once again get a helping hand from you, the taxpayer, to the tune of $4 trillion. Bloomberg News columnist David Riley says that Barney Frank, the powerful chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, is the person to thank for that. David here, you know, a lot of times in the holiday season, people, they put their feet up. You decided to go through the Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Right. Almost 1,300 pages of legislation. How fun. But you found some very interesting it, it stuff. It was great. Instead of Twas the Night Before Christmas, and my two boys <laughs> got to hear all Barney Frank's handiwork. Yeah. And it's funny, we were just talking there about, uh, you know, how much the financial services industry spent on lobbying of right. uh, $349 million. Well, they, they got some good they return don't. for that in this bill because the, the biggest fear of a bill like this for the financial services lobby was that it would go in and, say, break up too big to fail firms. That's not happening with this. No, no, no. In fact, in the 1,287 pages of legislation in this bill, that phrase isn't even mentioned once. Yeah. Well, you go back to what Barney Frank was saying, though, this idea that if a company gets into trouble, if it fails, now you put it to death. That, that seems to be one of the key ideas behind this well, legislation. That's, that's sort of the idea, but that's not really happening because when you dig into the bowels of the legislation, two things that really jump out at you are, first of all, the $4 trillion number you said. In the, this current crisis, the Federal Reserve banks went out and expanded the Fed's balance sheet and put pumped liquidity or emergency funding into the system. Probably you could estimate by about $2 trillion. This bill says they can go out and put $4 trillion into the system if need be. It also says the government can backstop banks' liabilities once again. So we really haven't changed things. and It's not talking about putting them to death, it's talking about continuing to support too big to fail banks. You also found some interesting insight into banker bonuses in this. Right. Well, actually, that's one thing the bankers won't necessarily be too happy about because there is language in there that would let regulators um, go in and change compensation schemes if they feel that they're uh, too risky. So banker bonuses could be back in play. Very quickly, though, there is that positive you see in this in the Consumer Financial Protection Agency. Well, I, I think that's definitely a positive. We saw the banks were very opposed to it, um, and th that's good for consumers. It probably doesn't go far enough in some of the powers given to the agency. Right. Um, but it's a start. What are you doing for New Year's? You're gonna, you know, pick something else that's well, awful remember, to this, read. This is just the House version. The Senate <laughs> has another 1,200-page version, so I'll hunker down with that. Thanks, David. Appreciate the insight. And of course, these are David's own views, uh, not the views of Bloomberg News. Uh,